start off by thanking UPS for smashing this box. Hopefully nothing's broken inside. So I haven't actually seen one of these in person yet, so this is my first time seeing it, probably just like you. So let's take a look at this thing. Got some nice directions it looks like. This looks like cam and crank sensors, I'm guessing. Already looks nice. This looks like the ignition harness. Also very nice, you can also see how big the wires are compared to the standard stuff. That's a pretty significant upgrade there. This looks like injectors. And this is gonna be the big main engine harness. Super beefy wiring. All right, let's pull these out of the bags and take a closer look. Just read the directions and the few takeaways we have here are we have two CAN bus connectors, which makes your life a whole lot easier. But if you're going to do a firmware update, make sure that nothing else is plugged into the CAN bus other than however you're doing the firmware update. So obviously if you're using a USB to CAN cable to do the update, then that has to be plugged in. Got a kick out of this one. IEC is your idle oil control motor, which is on the throttle body. If you don't know what the throttle body is, we highly suggest that you stop what you're doing and bring your project to someone who does. And probably the coolest part of this whole deal is after you just simply plug in all of the connectors that are labeled, four wires to connect and you're up and running. A whole big, huge harness like that and only having to connect four wires is pretty cool. So first we have our injector harness here. You can see it's branched real nice. Everything's enclosed. It splits from here. Really nice connectors. Nice beefy power wires. Labeled what style injector connectors there are, their logo, and all of the actual injector connectors themselves are really nice. And I think it's a safe bet to assume that all of the injectors are numbered correctly. You're not gonna have your even and odd banks swapped like on some of the standard Holly harnesses. And you can see that none of our injector connectors are labeled to be a knock sensor or a coolant temp sensor, which uh, actually does happen from time to time. So the injector harness is real nice. Next up, we have our ignition harness. These ground wires are nice and beefy, nice ring terminals, and the wires are actually long enough to reach wherever you want them to go. Pretty nice here too. Again, everything is nice and labeled. And these are plugging directly into the coil, so you do not have to reuse the OEM sub harness that has 360,000 miles on it that's been caught on fire three times. So this is a, a really nice addition there. So that looks really nice. This is probably the most simple, but one of the nicest parts of this harness. Well, maybe saying the nicest parts isn't uh, the best way to describe that, but one of the more unique things. So this one is a 58X harness. So what's nice is if you ever change engines or anything like that, all you have to do is swap out this little tiny harness and then you can basically put whatever you want into the car without having to rewire everything. And these, uh, the labors are really nice and they don't have the super like foggy clear heat shrink that you see a lot of guys using. You make this nice label and then you put your clear heat shrink on it and it's just all foggy and looks like it's 200 years old. So that looks really nice. And they're labeled cam and crank so you can't mess that up. And this is nice and nice and stout. Next we have the whole main engine harness. Okay, so we have our ECU connector here. This looks like O2, which it's labeled wideband, so I guess that was correct assumption there. We really need to lay this one out to appreciate it, I think, but got TPS, IEC. I mean, obviously it's gonna have all of the, the engine sensors you would expect it to have. Here's the ignition harness, so that's gonna plug right into here. Uh, let's lay this out a little bit nicer so we can take a better, better look than this just being slopped all over the table. So here's our big, huge harness. You can see again, it's labeled. It's a Chevy harness made in the USA. You can see like here's our CAN bus wiring, properly twisted. And this little things like this are what make 
such a big difference. You can see where the wires are split. Looks like they're using proper solder sleeves. And if you've ever dug into some of the other options as far as harnesses go, you can see why there's a lot of issues and problems and you can see why this is essentially wanted or needed, depending on, on how you decide to look at that. The next thing probably worth noting here is we have two can connections, so no need for a splitter. And everything starts branching out way early and everything gives you really long leads. So this is gonna make installing this significantly easier and cleaner than uh, with some of the other like universal options. So if you were paying $10,000 for a one-off harness built specifically for your car, then you could branch all of this stuff essentially right where you wanted it, right where you needed it to go. But for something that you can place an order and it comes to your house in a box and you can install it a couple of hours later and not have to take your car somewhere, uh, this is a really nice, kind of upgrade again compared to some of the other options that are out there. And here is our O2, which is relatively close to a trillion miles long. So that is going to reach wherever you want it to go. So that's nice. There's nothing worse than when the wideband wiring is too short to get where you need it to go. And here we have all of our loose wires, which is gonna be, you know, your main power and ground. There's a couple wires that you're not gonna use. Your fuel pump, well, when I say you're not gonna use, a majority of people aren't gonna use, but they're there if you need them. And we've got a fuel pump wire in here somewhere, which we'll need to drive a relay. And this is our fuse block, which this in itself makes this harness so much cleaner than having random fuses uh, that nobody ever mounts and they end up causing all kinds of problems or just flopping around. Can I open this with one hand? Check that out, I can't. So you got some mini fuses, some relays, and this is really clean and nice, and it gives you a nice spot to actually mount this. So don't let this just flop around and beat itself to death on your firewall. Actually mount this to something, and your life will become better. So as we work our way down the harness, we have a input-output connector, which is really nice. And same thing with the power tap here. So this way, if you already have a harness in your car and you're using the power tap or input output harness, or you wanna use the auxiliary harness that Holly sells, or there's a lot of other cool options out there where these are pre-populated and go to different things like flex fuel sensors, boost control, multi-position switches, so on and so forth. Um, all of those existing options are just gonna plug right into this harness. So that was, I think, very smart of them to leave that or incorporate that into this harness. Now the rest of this is, I would say, kind of what you would expect and right in line with everything else on this harness. Uh, but we have a, you know, obviously connector for our injectors and our coils and all of our individual sensors. But what's really nice here is you can see this is branched all the way back here. And now it's, you know, this long. And for the most part, most of these things are on their own kind of branches or whatever you want to call that. So if you've dealt with any of this type of stuff in the past, you might have run into a situation where the harness is branched really far forward. So you have to you know, run your stuff all the way to the front of the engine and then it has to do U-turn and make its way back to the firewall where you have stuff mounted and whatnot. So with this, it's really gonna give you the option to cleanly run all of this stuff wherever it needs to go. But at the same time, it's you know laid out smart, like these are branched relatively close to one another, but it's the throttle position sensor and the auto control valve, and they're both on the throttle body, so they don't need their own separate branches. So let's talk about this harness real quick and go over some of the questions that I've already been asked a bunch of times about this. The first one, and probably the most common question I've been asked is, why would I need this? And the answer is, is just like everything else in life, it's nice to have options, and some options are simply better than others. You know, you can live in a $100,000 house, you can live in a million dollar house, and one of them is going to be nicer than the other one. You can buy a Chinese 88 millimeter turbo, or you can buy a Precision ProMod 88 millimeter turbo, and one of the two is going to be better than the other one. This is, this is no exception. If you're familiar with some of the problems and issues that some of the other harnesses on the market seem to have, all of those kind of common problems were addressed within this harness. So it's gonna give you a much cleaner look, a much cleaner install. A lot of the crimps and the splices and the, the branches and the splitting 
you know, the wires and so on and so forth, they're all gonna be a lot nicer, a lot cleaner, a lot less problem prone. There is absolutely nothing more frustrating when dealing with a car than chasing around wiring problems. And I think that was probably one of the biggest kind of reasons for this harness to even come about is to essentially eliminate a lot of the common problems that seem to happen on a day-to-day -day basis with some of these other harness options. On top of that, there's a bunch of beefed up wiring. There's just a bunch of stuff to simply make this better. All the connectors and pins and everything are brand new. And again, for something that you can just pick up that's gonna be universal, it ships to you in a box and you can have it installed in the car an hour or two later. I think this is just gonna be an awesome option for a lot of people. Now, if you already have a Holly harness in your car, for example, and your car runs perfectly fine and you have no problems, then maybe this isn't a necessary upgrade for you. If you haven't purchased your Holly system yet, or it's a race car, you're trying to make a bunch of big power, the, you know, the additional beefiness of the wiring can go a long way. And again, just knowing that you're not gonna have to troubleshoot bad crimps within the harness is invaluable to me anyways. Now, if you haven't purchased your Holly system or haven't purchased your wiring harness yet or had your car wired yet, then uh, this is something I would strongly encourage you to look into. It is significantly nicer and better, so obviously it's gonna cost a little bit more, but I think the price of this harness is extremely fair for what it is. I guess while we're on that subject, uh, wiring is pretty interesting because there's guys that think because you used a Harbor Freight butt connector instead of uh, twisting two wires together and electrical taping them that you did a significantly better job and they're impressed by that. And then there's other guys that, you know, you, it, it's not a $30,000, you know, fly to outer space type of uh, mil spec harness. So, you know, you're not paying for that. So I think this is for the average guy with a, uh, you know, a nice car or, or a race car, then uh, this is just, again, this is an awesome option. If you're looking for that $30,000 spaceship harness, then, uh, you know, you might wanna take your car somewhere and actually have it professionally wired for your particular car. That's always going to give you the best option, assuming whoever is doing it is doing it properly. But the amount of time that that is going to take and the amount of money that it's going to take, it's not on the same playing field as this harness. So you kind of can't really compare those two. Uh, the next one is why isn't this available for whatever engine it is that you have. And I think this is simply a numbers game. This is a brand new product. And when you make something like this, you have to make it in volume. And when you have to make it in volume, it gets very expensive very quickly. Now, I have no idea what the initial investment was on this harness, but my guess is it's probably, if not over, it's probably flirting with six figures. So the Chevy harness is the most universal. It works for multiple different platforms, so to speak. And there is, 2,000 people with an LS engine as, you know, for every one small block Ford guy. So if it was your money and you were essentially making a bet uh, on yourself and, and hoping that people were going to buy this new item that you released, it makes the most sense to start with the most popular thing, right? So if this sells well, my assumption is they'll branch out and do some other different engine combinations. So if they don't offer exactly what you're looking for right now, just give it some time, you might see it in the future. And I can't believe that I have to say this, but if they do not offer the harness for your particular engine, you can't just buy this harness and then complain that it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. The Fords are totally different than the Chevy, so don't buy the Chevy harness and try and bastardize it to work on your Ford. Just wait for the Ford harness to become available. This harness also does appear to be uh, significantly longer. I don't know the length offhand and I don't have a Holly harness here to measure, but it does seem like it's longer. So if you're trying to mount your ECU behind your seat or your engines in the back or front or ECUs here, there, wherever, this thing seems to be plenty long enough to get just about anywhere you want it to go. So that's another nice part about it. I know for a lot of guys nowadays, it seems like it's almost a contest to build the worst, crappiest car imaginable. So if you're trying to win that contest and all you care about is the price of things, then this harness is not for you. However, if you are trying to make your car as nice as you can while not going overboard and buying the $30,000 engine harness, I think this is a really nice upgrade over, you know, some of the other options that are out there. I think it's very well thought out and I think a lot of you guys are going to be really happy. So if this is harness is something that you might be interested in, I will leave a link to HCR's website in the description below. This video is not sponsored. I do not get any kickbacks. I don't, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other if you buy it. I just am legitimately making this video kind of praising this harness because I think it is very high quality and I think it will be an awesome addition and fix a lot of issues that a lot of you guys are running into. So anyways, it's up to you. Uh, that's gonna do it for this one. I will see you later.